This week on the Computer Chronicles, parents and PCs. We'll show you some great websites where you can get answers to your parenting questions. We'll show you some software that you can use with your kids. Are you trying to juggle working at home and being a mom or dad? Your computer can help. And what to do with a teenager. We'll even have some software suggestions for parents of teens. Plus, my pick of the week, one way to get your kids to read. It's all coming up next on the Computer Chronicles. The Computer Chronicles is brought to you by BigStar.com with thousands of videos and DVDs for the whole family. Additional support by TechWeb for up-to-the-minute technology news. And by TVA, Television Associates, bridging the worlds of computers and video with DVD authoring and MPEG encoding services. Hi, and welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffe. Well, one of the reasons adults buy computers is so their children can have them. It's pretty clear that computers can be very useful in schoolwork, and they're also a pretty good babysitter. But computers can also help adults be good parents. There's a long list of software and Internet sites that parents can use to answer questions and solve problems. And we're going to begin by looking at some of the resources for parents online. And Lisa's going to be our guide, and you have a wonderful website parenting-qa.com? Correct. And I take it, therefore, I can ask questions as a parent? You can ask anything. You can also browse by topic, do a global search, search by keyword. Or can we do some of this for yeah, real? sure. All right. It'd be great. I'm parent. I got some questions. Okay. The very first question I have is breastfeeding. Newborn, we just got home, and mom's worried about, am I doing it right? Is the baby getting enough? And so on and so forth. And we just want to get some background. That's great. We get a lot of questions on breastfeeding. What you would do is go to the Browse by Topic, mm -hmm. and I click see up on breastfeeding, for hit go. And what kind of stuff do I get here? You get essays, tips, resource guides. So there's kind of a little general background here on breastfeeding. Here you go. Here's a um, comforting essay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what we need is comforting. Books. Okay, and then little hot links to other resources exactly. on the, on the topic of breastfeeding. Exactly. Tips and fact sheets. Right. We also have subcategories. If this isn't quite it, you may want to find out. Right, now, what about my role? I'm thinking, well, is there anything I can do to help okay, out in this so problem as the dad? Click on father's role, and here you have a handy. Oh, you actually had a category called father's yes, role. Yes, huh? handy okay. tip sheet on how dads can be supportive. How to burp? Well, I can deal with that <laughs> part of it. <laughs> Take the baby for an hour <laughs> or two. All right. Can I ask you the next question? Certainly. Baby doesn't sleep through the night and it's getting a little bit wearing. And is there something we can do differently, or when will the baby sleep through the night? Well, let's do a global search. I can just type in that question. Huh? Sleeping, Sleeping through, through the, night the night is the issue. Oh, please, God. <laughs> so okay. hard when the baby's crying and parents aren't getting any sleep. Yeah, it really yeah. is. Let's see, we should get a compilation of, uh, here we go, we okay, got so 38 got lots sources. Of, lots of stories, tips, facts, essays on there, huh? Books. And it, the books have hot links to sites. Mm -hmm. So you should find all you need just by all doing right. the global Next search. Next question, and you just brought it up, and that's the baby's crying. And of course, every parent worries am I doing something wrong, or how do I stop the kid right. from how crying? Do, how do we stop the child? What do from I do crying? there? Go into browse by age, and let's look under baby. This is a baby issue, we hope. <laughs> and you'll see all the common things that parents oh, okay. want to ask. And you got about. the crying category. And here we have crying. Mm -hmm. Here we go, right away core resources, books. Tips and fact sheets. Who's the calming of fussy And baby. one of the things I like here, tips for soothing yourself when your baby is crying. <laughs> That's the real issue, <laughs> right? And how to quiet a crying baby. Let's go to this. So you can print out this oh, tip great. sheet. And it gives you some strategies. All right. Now, suppose I don't find my particular question in your sort of preset stuff. Can I just, like, send Lisa a question yeah. and say, what's the answer to this Certainly. particular question? Certainly. And that's that? really one of the most unique and special features about Parenting-QA is you can drop us a line directly. And so that's the ask us? That's the ask us. So I just send you kind of a little email thing. Yep, and moms and dads feel isolated a lot of the times and feel like they're asking yeah. silly questions. So drop us a line and we'll get back to you with an expert oh, answer. That's great. All right, now what is CyberMom? I see you have a CyberMom. The CyberMom is a really fun site. After you've done all your research and you yeah. want to have some fun. Okay, the baby's the, finally gone to take a nap. Right, mom needs something <laughs> and right. she, she wants some community. And here are a bunch of moms who. So a chat room with other young moms right, and so on? Right, recipes, book clubs, uh -huh. uh, astrology, um, everything you could imagine. You know, the makeup, cyber health, mom. The cybermom.com. Cyber Lisa, thank you very thank much. Thank you very much, Stuart. 
One of the real challenges for a parent is to figure out what software to buy for your children. There are so many choices out there. We can't possibly cover them all, but we do have some ideas for you. And Roberta, you are going to be our software guide. You're an uh, author, writer. Matter of fact, this is uh, your book, Does Jane Compute? All about girls in cyberspace, girls I take it? Girls and computers, right. Okay. Uh, let's be non-sexist, talk about boys and girls if okay. we can, okay? And you've got, we can't cover this all, as I said, but you've picked three software programs, which are things that parents and kids can kind of do together. That's right. You know, oftentimes kids end up spending hours sitting in front of the computer by themselves. And right. while sometimes it's educational, sometimes it's not, it's great to have activities that you can engage your child with at the computer. Okay, so I've got, let's say, a kid's young, uh, second, third grade. What, what's this, what's Well, this is example? Clue Finder's third grade adventure. It's a multi-subject okay. educational software program. So you're going to learn about math, language arts, variety of different activities. So it's sort of a game, but you learn along the way. It's a game, but it's a lot of educational like, activities. What's the challenge over here? We're well, supposed to find a moth that's red and striped with curly antennas? With curly antennas, antennas and hopefully we can okay. actually you're get You're going to do it, not me. Red and striped and curly antennas. And oh, and you put it in your backpack? Put it in the backpack, save it for later. Um, now, one of the things is parents might watch their child doing an activity right. like this and say, okay, what exactly are they getting out of this activity? <laughs> um, I know it's supposed to be educational, but what are they getting out of it? And that's what's great about this program. You can go in as a parent. If you can't sit there uh -huh. and watch your so child. So that's leveling? This is le well, there's two different factors okay. here. One is you can go in for leveling and you can say, okay, okay, I know my daughter's really good at math, but she's struggling a little bit at language So arts. these are the various skills and, and what level you want what it to level? be at. It'll adjust on its own Got or it. you can adjust it, which is great. Okay. Now the other thing is, it's nice it would be nice if we could as parents sit there with our kids all the time but, but most of us can't do yeah. that and so what you can do is you can go into progress report and you can look at the different activities and you can see okay, how they're so doing so what did the kids them. spend their time on and how well did they do and That's therefore right. where do they need help in the future exactly and you might take that um, to okay. off the computer activities you might talk to the teacher a whole different way all right let's go into right. another category now and okay. sort of the creativity and we have that on this computer so sure. let me switch over to uh, your monitor over there and what is this one this is pure fun and it's a way <laughs> for parents and kids to create all kinds of different crafts. Okay, so say we want to create a birthday card for grandma or right. something. Okay. I could do, we could do it together with the kids? Absolutely, and what's nice about this is they have ready-made activities, so if your child's young mm -hmm. and can't really maneuver around on his or her own, you can walk them through Just it, sort of but they can click. pick. They don't yeah. have to actually do the hard artwork. Right, so we're going to go through and we're going to look for a card for grandma for uh -huh. her birthday. So again, I mean, this is sort of a learning thing too, in a way, right? Because well, it is in that it does a couple of things. One is there's a huge sense of satisfaction for kids when they can give grandma yourself, the card and right, say, right. "I did it." And you, you know, nobody did it for me. <laughs> you save the two bucks. And the other thing that's nice about it is that the kids can go through. Look, we're going to take a greeting card here, okay. and we're going to say, "Birthday," and we'll pick grandma. And the nice part about it is, let's say they want a funny card for grandma. Uh -huh. They can pick that out if they want something that's a little more serious. And again, the idea is a good thing the kid and the parent can do together. It's a nice thing to do together. And I, you know, what's really important here is that you let the, the child be in the yeah, driver's seat yeah, whenever yeah. possible. All right, Roberta, I want you to show us one more piece of software, and that is Encarta, which you have up here right now. Other problem for the parent is the kid's always asking questions, which are sometimes hard to answer. Why doesn't the moon fall or stuff like that, right? That's right. And we always throw up our hands and say, oh, you know, when we go to the library, we'll check it out. <laughs> right. If you're like me, but you never get around But if you've got the right it. software, you can ask the question right there That's at home. That's right. That's right. All right. So this is in Carta. And let's say my kid's interested in, as I say, science space program, the Apollo program. I want to give them the history of, of the moon program. Okay. Well, let's check that out. So then. we want to go to Apollo. We're going to go to so Apollo. So you just type it in, and there's millions oh. of choices. Yes. Let's say uh, Apollo 8. Oops. Apollo. See, it even told yeah, you you spelled it, it wrong. Told me I spelled let's it do wrong. Apollo 8. That was, okay. I think, the first moon launch. There we go. And you know, not only can you read about it, but let's face it, kids love pictures, they love sound. So let's check out the multimedia. So picture. it's kind of better than the print book in a way, because it's got the audio and the video and all that That's stuff. That's right. Okay, so, so can we look choices. at, say, the launch? That's always sure. exciting. And it's Apollo 13, the movie. Um, uh, kids are familiar, kids are familiar with the story, with right? Absolutely. They think Tom Hanks was an astronaut. That's right. <laughs> So here they get to see the real thing, and it's a great way to get them excited about history, get them interested yeah. in the And, of course, they're historical figures, and you can That's hear right. Kennedy, Martin Luther King, all that kind of stuff. It's really almost And you like Encarta. I do, and there's links to the web, so you're never at a loss for Okay, Roberta, thank you very much. Nice to meet you. Well, computers and the Internet have enabled many parents to work at home, but that raises lots of questions about how to be a parent and a productive worker in the same place at the same time. There is, though, a web community devoted to just this issue. Cheryl Sandberg is a full-time parent with two children, ages six and two. She is a full-time daycare provider for two-year-old Jake, 
She drives her daughter Leslie to school and picks her up at the end of class. She is also a small business owner. Her company, Sandberg Business Development, has no office and no staff. She runs it from a corner of her home, surrounded by kids, toys, and pets. Cheryl got the idea for her web design business by browsing websites and peeking behind the scenes. I kind of noticed that, well, this is, looks a little easier than maybe that people are making it to be. And um, then I would go to different pages around the internet and view the source and finally figured out, hey, you know, <laughs> this can't be that hard. And so um, I looked into it further and found a couple places online that, you know, teaches website building and I thought, I can do this. As Cheryl's business grew, the strains of balancing home and work increased. She soon found a website called The Entrepreneurial Parent that offered help. I was looking definitely to get some advice on, on how to balance, you know, the, my children because, you know, they're only little once and I really needed to find out how to balance my time with them, with my business, with clients calling, and my husband going, how come you're not making dinner tonight, you know, why are we eating hot dogs again? The EP website is an online community providing advice and feedback through bulletin boards, expert advisors, and publications. Online professionals are listed according to their expertise. Message boards provide a venue for members to share their experiences with other parents who might be facing the same challenges. There is also a book on the subject. A community being like there's a place that you can go and uh, post uh, messages to a discussion board and um, talk amongst ourselves about uh, business and or our family or our career and things like that. Both Cheryl and her husband work at home now. Although she bemoans the cramped quarters, Cheryl says she could not face the 9-to-5 schedule of a traditional job any longer. I love being at home with my kids and taking them to the park and picking them up from school and helping in class and doing whatever they need. Uh, it is just so rewarding and the extra money is so nice and, you know, I don't have to worry about paying daycare. Working at home with two small children and a spouse requires careful coordination of work time and family time, and that can lead to some long but satisfying days. My kids, uh, both of them aren't in full-time school, so there's no um, real time that I'm by myself to just focus unless he's napping, which, you know, <laughs> sometimes I have to do a little housework too. So, um, but. Uh, so most of my work is actually done from 8.30 to midnight, and uh, that can be a little rough, but uh, I wouldn't trade it for anything. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Sarah O'Brien. The internet is great for kids and parents, but there is so much out there on the web that sometimes it's hard to find the site that has the information you really want. To solve that problem, there is a special internet search engine just for parents, and Scott, is that a fair way of describing abcparenting.com? Yes, a very fair way. Uh, give us kind of an introduction. What are the kinds of things I could, I could find through ABC Parenting? Sure. Um, the abcparenting.com, it's, um, it's a new site. It came out about three uh -huh. months ago. And our flagship site, Parenthood Web, has been out for about three years. And we really saw the need for a specialized site for parents. So this is kind of a Yahoo for parents? Exactly. And where Yahoo tries to be all things to all pe right. people, we focus on the cream of the crop sites for parents. All right. So what are your sort of categories or, or channels or whatever you would call them? Sure. Here? We have um, a couple of dozen high-level categories, caring mm -hmm. for children. So nutrition, family, jobs, shopping, safety. Exactly. What's support, for example? I see you have okay, a support so, category. So we go into support, and then we have subcategories, child loss, loss, All AP. right. So if you're dealing with a particular problem and you require some support and you want to talk to other parents or whatever. Exactly. Exactly. There's sites there. that specialize in that, so we'll go to special needs children, 
as you can see, it came out with 88 listings. Yeah. Now, I see you have a kind of star rating. So these are reviewed, all these sites. Somebody's actually looked at them and rated them. Exactly. And we, we use um, real parents, moms and dads. Uh -huh. um, we felt that. So you have some sort of board of parents that goes exactly, and actually does this. Exactly. People submit sites, plus we go out and, and review the sites. All right. Can we go back and look at some of those other categories? For example, health. We haven't talked about that yet. I mean, one of the concerns a parent has is you, know, you have a sickness problem or a health problem with your kid. Where would this end? Sure. So you'd go right to the health medical category. Okay. And then again, the subcategory. Categories: dental, health, fitness, uh, well, bedwetting. That's a good topic. That, uh, okay, so within bedwetting, again, we have you know, a couple of dozen sites. Mm -hmm. We'll take a look. Bedwetting Blues. This comes up with drpolo.com, which is a very popular pediatric uh -huh. site. And what's nice about abcparenting.com is we don't we try not to pigeonhole sites. In a site like Yahoo, they would try to find the one place to put it, probably pediatric. Yeah, so odds are, if we were looking for bedwetting, we wouldn't get to drpolo.com. Exactly, or it, it would be difficult. But what, yeah. we, what we'll do is we'll look at all the aspects of a site like drpolo.com uh -huh. that are terrific, and we'll put them, we'll review since articles. Somebody's actually been there and read it, then you have better information. Exactly. All right, let's go back to some of the other categories. I saw you had a safety one, for example. That's an issue I would have, because as a kid gets a little older, you start worrying about the car seat and the airbag, and should it be on, and should it be off, and that kind sure, of Sure, so we'll say safety, and within safety, we have recalls, household safety, transportation safety, mm -hmm. and that's what you were talking about. We have airbag safety. We have a real nice site here, child passenger safety. Mm -hmm. This is by the National Highway Administration, information on buying a car seat. Now, I, I noticed you had a section on there where I could vote on whether I like the site or not. So you have a sort of a people's choice, best parenting site? Exactly. Parents, they visit sites and they vote whether they like them or not. And mm -hmm. then we compile a list each week. We'll go down here. Um, top sites is voted by our visitors. Okay. And the, the top. The, the idea the, box is the most popular exactly, site. Exactly. The ideabox.com is a terrific site. Uh -huh. And um, parents submit um, tips and articles and arts and crafts that they can do along with their kids. And that's weekly? Changes every week? Exactly. All right. Let me ask you this question. What what is the most common thing that people search for? What's the most popular search Actually, word? by far, the most popular is baby names, finding the perfect name. For first things first, one. what to call the kid. Exactly. All so right. we go under pregnancy, baby names, right on the home page. Okay. And again, you know, we come back with about a dozen listings. And we'll, actually, let's take a look. This is a... Um, a lot a, of places to go to find oh, the name for the baby. Exactly. And this is um, on the Parenthood web, which is uh -huh. the flagship site. And we have most popular name lists. We have articles, names, So I can and actually behavior. look for a real name for. So let's let's sure, try. Sure, let's do that. Um, we could put in the number of syllables. We could put in the a two the, syllable name. Uh, okay. We could put in the first letter. B. It begins with B. Uh, let's do a boy's a boy. name. Uh, let's a do Celtic, Celtic origin. origin. And what can we call this kid? Beacon. There Devin. Bowie. The perfect name. <laughs> Brian. Names. All right. One other thing I want you to show us real quickly. You have a kind of neat thing here where you can keep a sort of personal journal for your family and kind of a little mini website for your family. Exactly. We call that the interactive journal. Uh -huh. It's free, and it's a way of sharing family events and pregnancy with um, people all over the world. Uh -huh. And it's all password protected, and we could, it's free to upload pictures. And that's your family right there. That's huh? actually my son, Jack, three uh -huh. years old, and little Ryan. <laughs> All right, so I could do that and post my own stuff, and, and again, password protected if I wanted it to be, exactly. so only members of the family could get to that. Exactly. Very cool. Scott, thank you very much. Well, if you thought parenting was rough with toddlers and young kids, wait until they become teenagers. That's when the help sign really goes up. Can you actually find computer activities that parents and teens can do together? And Pam, I guess your answer is yes. You're the expert. You wrote a book, didn't you? I sure did. Okay. Uh, give us some examples. You've brought along three different examples of programs that, mm -hmm. believe it or not, a teen and a parent can work together on. What's the first yeah. one? The first one is called Math Heads, which is a really jive, live program that teens will be interested in, but that's high enough of a level for them to actually get some benefit so from. So it sort of teaches math, but it's engaging and it's hip, so the kids will stay with it? Right. So you'll convince them to go for it. All right, let's so show it to us. All right, I'm going to choose patterns. Okay. And basically, this person is going to dance around, and I need to fix these patterns, which are truly SAT level. Okay. And uh, let me try That's to right. finish so it. That's right. So like, what's the next number wow. in that sequence? We're exactly. all familiar with that question. Exactly. So you, you proceed until basically you get enough wrong answers that... And the little dancer follows you around. <laughs> okay. And she drops off the floor. Okay. So if you get a right answer, something good happens, I assume. And yes, you get to dance longer. <laughs> you, okay. Okay. But the bottom line with this program yeah. is that it's a lot of fun. It's engaging for teens and it will keep them occupied. Teens don't necessarily want to come home from their excessive schoolwork and then say hey go do your in. math yeah no. so, so you got to have the dancing and the music and the cool stuff that makes them feel that's happy. right especially right. with mtv this is kind of dance mtv all right so this is called math heads yes. and as we saw i mean that's as you said sat level kinds of questions absolutely there. All right, should we switch over here now? Sure. And another one uh, you have is, is a program that teaches languages. And again, this is something certainly parents and teens, they're probably studying a language in high mm -hmm. school, right? Yeah. 
It's transparent language, and it comes in French, it comes in Japanese, all sorts of different languages. Uh -huh. Even English is a second language. Okay. And there are some uh, really nice workbook features, but one of the best features is that you can read into it and hear your voice. So you can actually it. work on your pronunciation? You sure can. Okay, so we have the French program. Huh? Let's, let's hear the, the French speaker. N. That's how the French native speaker okay, sounds. Go ahead. Now Speak. I'll record mine. L. Whoa. Yeah, that was pretty good. <laughs> That's you not practiced. bad. Okay, that so was an easy word. Yeah, so <laughs> you can hear theirs again. And mine. L. Whoops. <laughs> Once again, sort of part game, part learning. Absolutely. Something that, that parents and, and teenagers even could do together. Sure, and the thing is, is that this is not a competitive thing. Teens don't feel like they need to be at loggerheads with their parents. Right, and right, it's right. more of a supportive thing, and it's more fun. Parents can learn the language with hmm. their teens. All right, now another thing I want you to show us, let's switch back to the other computer sure. there. And if your kid's now 16, 17, you're thinking about college and all those issues and mm -hmm. SAT exams and where to apply and scholarships and so on, and you've got a website you're recommending, right? I sure do. This is called weapply.com, and basically what it does two things. It gives parents and teens really good options for downloading free software that helps them apply online to literally hundreds of top schools. Uh -huh. And you can just scroll so let's down. Take a look at this, sure. Yeah. And so this is all about the application process and picking colleges and that right. kind of thing? You know what I really like about this site more than anything else, uh -huh. though, is that you can look at mailing lists and you can also look at all the sorts of the different uh, colleges that are there. Mm -hmm. So you can go right to the college's website and begin the search process. Okay, I see there's discussion, for example. I mean, you can have sort of mm -hmm. talk to other people about what do you think of that school or Absolutely. talk to somebody that school. Absolutely. And you know what's really great about this? If parents start this, even when kids are freshmen yeah. in high school, they can look at the application process and say, wow, right. I need to have some extracurricular activities. What are those? Oh, that's right. <laughs> you yeah. know? So you know, ahead of time what that school is going to be looking for and not wait till the last minute when it's I'll too late you, to get that uh, stuff on. I'll tell you, a real eye-opener is to go to the Harvard site and yeah. pull up the Harvard application. Right. Uh-oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, if I want to go to Harvard, I better prepare when I'm six, right? Absolutely. All right, one other site uh, I know you're interested in, I just mentioned, is, is Talk City. What do you yeah. do there? What you do there, it's basically a Java chat site. So basically, no matter what kind of computer you have. Is this for parents or teens or what? For both. Okay. If you're a parent, you can go there, pull up the Talk City site, and the first download takes a little bit uh -huh. of time, unless you have a T1 or a cable right, modem. Right, right. Even then, it takes about but it's a minute. But it's about dealing with teenage kids, basically, sure, you, you from talk either with, side. Right. You talk with parents of teenagers, and you talk with, if you have a teen, they yeah. can talk with teens. So when you've had it up to here, you don't know what to do next. Right. Log on to Talk City and talk to a parent who's been through the same problem. Yes. The nice thing about the Talk City site is that it's heavily moderated. Uh -huh. So it's really one of the cleanest talk yeah. sites out there. Cam, thank you very much. Thank you. All right. That's our look at parenting and computers. I'll be back in just a moment with my pick of the week. Now for my pick of the week. One of the jobs for any parent is to try and get your child to read. Well, if you've had a problem getting your son or daughter to pick up a book, what I'm about to show you may just help. This is the new Rocket eBook from Nouveau Media. As much as we may like reading traditional books, once you get used to computers and searching and linking, paper books seem a rather primitive way to store and transmit information. With this new Rocket eBook, you really have the best of both worlds. It's sort of shaped like a small book. You can hold it like a book. You can carry it like a book. But that is where the similarity ends. Look what else you can do with an eBook. First of all, it holds about 10 books in its memory. Sure beats carrying around 10 physical books. Secondly, you can buy books electronically and download them immediately from sites like BarnesandNoble.com. If the print is too small, you just tap and enlarge the font. You can underline text. You can bookmark text, you can annotate, and best of all, you can search the text for any word or phrase. If you're not sure what a word means, just tap on it, and you're instantly sent to the onboard dictionary for a definition. The Rocket eBook weighs just over a pound, it's backlit for easy reading at night, and the rechargeable battery lasts for over 30 hours. That's it for this edition of The Chronicles. We'll be back here again next week with more of the latest in hardware, software, and the internet. Thanks for joining us. I hope we'll see you here next time. The Computer Chronicles is brought to you by BigStar.com with thousands of videos and DVDs for the whole family. Additional support by TechWeb for up-to-the-minute technology news. And by TVA, Television Associates, 
bridging the worlds of computers and video with DVD authoring and MPEG encoding services. To purchase a videotape copy of today's program, call toll-free 1-888-310-7850. Please specify the show number and the topic. Next week on the Computer Chronicles, how to fix your PC. We'll take a look at the hardware side first and show you how to solve typical problems with the internal components of your computer. Then we'll take a look at the most common software problems, including Windows crashes and application malfunctions. And there are lots of software programs that can help you diagnose a computer problem. We'll review the best ones and web sources for dealing with PC problems. We'll show you some good sites that can help you do it yourself. It's all coming up next week on the Computer Chronicles. <laughs>